Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Keenan Anderson? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing him in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. In January 2023, 31-year-old Keenan Darnell Anderson was a high school teacher who worked for a school located in Washington, D.C. He was visiting his family in Los Angeles, California during the winter break. Keenan was the cousin of a co-founder of the political movement Black Lives Matter. It's not exactly clear where Keenan lived. As I mentioned, he worked at a school located in Washington, D.C., and was supposed to be on winter break and visiting California, but another report said he was a resident of Los Angeles. Either way, during the time I'm talking about in this video, he was in Los Angeles. Now moving to a timeline of the incident. On January 3, 2023, at about 3.35 p.m., a Los Angeles police officer on a motorcycle was flagged down for a motor vehicle collision near the intersection of Lincoln Boulevard and Venice Boulevard. He encountered a man who would later be identified as Keenan Anderson. Keenan had run into the middle of the street and asked the officer for help. Keenan was behaving erratically. The officer continued to the scene of the collision. Several people told him that Keenan was the driver. Therefore, the officer drove back to where Keenan was running across the street. The officer directed Keenan to move over to the sidewalk as Keenan said that someone was trying to kill him. Keenan kept repeating the phrase, I didn't mean to, as the officer ordered him to get up against a wall of a nearby building. Keenan stopped before reaching the wall and knelt on the sidewalk. At various times, he put his hands behind his back and on his head as if he was trying to surrender. The officer radioed for assistance and suspected that substance use was involved. Keenan explained to the officer that he lost his key and someone had come out to fix his car. He also repeated his claim that someone was trying to kill him. The officer asked Keenan about who was trying to kill him. Keenan responded by saying, I had a stunt today. He said he was driving a BMW and someone was trying to put stuff in his car. Keenan stayed on the sidewalk for about seven minutes, at which time he stood up and requested water. The officer said he would give him water in a second, but he needed him to sit against the wall. Keenan said that he wanted people to see him, the officer told him he could sit closer to the intersection so he could be seen. Keenan walked into the street. The officer tried to get him back to the sidewalk several times by telling him to come here, but Keenan ran westbound on Venice Boulevard. Using his motorcycle, the officer quickly caught up with Keenan. By this time, other officers were on the scene as well. The officer was now screaming at Keenan to get down. Keenan sat down on the pavement and turned to his side like he was surrendering but then he tried to stand up. A few officers attempted to place Keenan under arrest. He started screaming that the police were trying to kill him. He said, quote, they're trying to George Floyd me, unquote. As the officers were trying to restrain him, Keenan was warned that if he did not stop resisting, a taser would be deployed. This warning was issued 13 times. Keenan refused to comply. He said that CeeLo was trying to kill him perhaps referring to the beleaguered and controversial rapper CeeLo Green. It's not clear. Keenan also mentioned that the police were actors. The police deployed the taser on Keenan six times over the course of 42 seconds. Eventually, the police were able to handcuff him. As this was happening, Keenan said, this is an act. They're not the police. He repeated the name CeeLo several times. Keenan said, they think I killed CeeLo. They're trying to sedate me. I know too much. They sedated me. Keenan was transported to a local hospital. About four and a half hours later, he died of cardiac arrest. The family of Keenan Anderson filed a $50 million lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles, claiming that officers used unreasonably deadly force. The lawsuit said the force was intentionally malicious, oppressive, despicable, and represented a deliberate indifference to Keenan's rights and safety. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, after Keenan was involved in a motor vehicle collision that he caused, but before the police arrived, 
he attempted to gain entry into an Uber, as if he was trying to carjack it. Keenan was not successful and fled into the street. This is when he encountered the officer on a motorcycle. The family's lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles claims that Keenan did not pose any objectively reasonable threat to anyone. Based on the body camera video, this claim appears to be false. Keenan was not only a danger to himself, but to others. Item number two. During the encounter with the police, Keenan appeared to have a number of mental health symptoms. He was agitated, hypervigilant, erratic, made a series of bizarre statements consistent with being delusional, and appeared to be paranoid. After his death, it was determined that Keenan had both cocaine and marijuana in his system. Both of these drugs have a connection to paranoia. Studies have indicated that marijuana increases the likelihood of paranoid thoughts, as well as changes in perception, increased negative thoughts, and anxiety. Cocaine has a particularly strong association to paranoia. 68 to 84 percent of people who use cocaine will experience paranoia. The paranoia tends to increase in intensity over time with continued use of the drug. Cocaine also has a connection to psychosis, with about 40 percent of users experiencing hallucinations, and delusions. Item number three, cocaine may have caused Keenan to be paranoid and psychotic, but does cocaine have an association with violence? Could it explain how he resisted arrest? Research indicates that cocaine does have a connection to violence. 55% of people who use cocaine will engage in violent behavior. 46% of cocaine users will commit violent crimes. One study that specifically looked at Los Angeles examined a large sample of individuals who died a violent death in the city. 61% of these people tested positive for cocaine at autopsy. The fact that Keenan had used cocaine tends to be glossed over by a number of the reports about the incident, but it cannot be ignored. There is no doubt that cocaine could have been a major contributing factor to his behavior and to his death. Item number four. Looking at the body camera video, it's clear that Keenan was not complying with the commands of the officers. He was not attacking them, but he was trying to avoid being restrained. His actions seemed to be coming from a place of fear and paranoia, more so than anger or aggression. It was obvious that Keenan was in the midst of some type of mental health episode, almost certainly related to drugs. The officer on the motorcycle appeared to understand this based on his radio communication. He thought that Keenan had used substances. During the physical struggle, the officers became increasingly upset by Keenan's refusal to follow commands, as if he was trying to disrespect them. Their anger indicates that they expected him to respond rationally. So, on one hand, they understood he was using substances, but on the other hand, they thought that somehow he would act as if he had not used substances. Keenan was not trying to be stubborn, antagonistic, or disrespectful by refusing to comply, Rather, he was responding to overwhelming paranoia. Given the circumstances, deploying a taser six times in 42 seconds was excessive. There were multiple officers involved when the taser was first used. They should have been able to restrain Keenan physically without resorting to using a taser. These devices are less lethal than firearms, to be sure, but they do not qualify as non-lethal. There is always a risk of somebody dying when tasers are used, and in this particular confrontation, it was not worth taking the risk. The officers had other options. Item number five. At one point during the struggle, one officer put his forearm on Keenan's chest with his elbow on Keenan's neck. Another officer said, watch your elbow, partner. This statement weighs in favor of the officers by demonstrating they had an awareness they could cause harm to Keenan, and they were trying to avoid that outcome. Item number six. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Keenan Anderson was a drug user who did not understand how he may react to certain drugs. After using cocaine, he developed paranoid delusions and became agitated and erratic. He believed that evil forces were trying to kill him. He climbed into a BMW and drove recklessly in an effort to escape these forces. Eventually, Keenan caused a motor vehicle collision which disabled his BMW. In an effort to continue his escape, he tried to carjack an Uber, but was not successful. When confronted by the officer on the motorcycle, Keenan was right on the edge between talking to the officer 
and fleeing. So he was trying to comply in a sense, but he was being driven to escape. He was afraid, but he also wanted to resolve what was happening. He was trying to make sense of his feelings, but he couldn't do it. The cocaine-induced psychosis was too powerful and convincing. Keenan genuinely believed that the police were trying to kill him. They morphed into the evil forces from his delusion, so they stepped into that role which existed because of the delusional thought processes. As Keenan's fear intensified, he ran out into the street. He did not have a plan. He was not running anywhere specific. He was just trying to escape the evil forces. Keenan's actions put many people in danger, including himself. The police attempted to take him into custody, but he resisted the officers. The police had a numerical advantage, and time was on their side. The longer they were there, the more officers showed up. But they wanted to end the confrontation immediately. They were in a bit of a hurry. Despite recognizing this was a mental health-related situation, the police became overly aggressive and used excessive force in the form of a taser. Keenan later died from cardiac arrest, although at the time making this video, it's not clear what caused the cardiac arrest. Was it cocaine? Was it the taser? Perhaps it was a combination of both or something entirely different. Now moving to my final thoughts. In this case, both Keenan and the police made mistakes. It's not known if the police caused Keenan's death, but either way, the use of the taser was excessive. Keenan Anderson took a tremendous chance by using cocaine. He knew it was illegal, and he was aware that he had access to a motor vehicle. Keenan was responsible for putting himself and others in danger. He could have killed innocent people. He told the police that someone was trying to kill him. He was correct, but Keenan did not recognize that he himself was that someone. As far as the actions of the police, their recognition of a mental health crisis did not ultimately help Keenan Anderson. Police officers use the term mental health, but some have no idea what it means. To them, it's just a meaningless label that doesn't result in any modification of their tactics. Just like Keenan was unable to control his feelings of paranoia, the police in this situation were unable to control their feelings of anger. Unregulated feelings on both sides came together to cause a disaster. Those are my thoughts in the case of Keenan Anderson. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.